So hello, my name is Dan, and this is going to be a update to a video that I posted in September of 2015, and that video was about scopolamine being robbed, and uh, some of the stuff that I went through. I found a lab that would do scopolamine testing specifically, and specifically for hair, but that meant that I would have to wait three months before I could get the testing done which I was fine with. But if you think back to the video and if you watch the video that I posted prior to this one, I was dealing with a detective that had it in his head that he was going to arrest me because in his mind, I made everything up. I felt like I was in a race against time on this. And so when the lab technician who was going to do my hair follicle testing mentioned to me that if I had anything else that might have had some fluids in it, uh, that he could test that and it could be just as good. Blood and vomit in my sheets and I hadn't washed them. And so he told me that he could uh, take a sample of that vomit in those sheets and that dried vomit and that dried blood and it could be potentially just as uh, beneficial as doing a hair follicle test. He went ahead and tested and then it came back uh, that he didn't find anything of any specific anything. So that was a fail. I did have a problem with that detective and what I did is I went to if you can see here it is a civilian complaint review board that if you have a problem with um, a police officer or a detective or someone in law enforcement you can um, complain about them they have someone record your complaint the allegations were um, offensive language that this detective made remarks to me based on my perceived sexual orientation. Uh, the other allegation was abuse of authority that said detective threatened to arrest me. Their findings were um, in terms of offensive language unsubstantiated and in terms of abuse of authority that the detective was exonerated. Basically, there was no one else in the room. It was just me and this detective. So um, it was a he said, he said. But I was hoping, at minimum, I could get a different detective assigned to my case. And also, I was hoping that if anybody else had made allegations against this detective, that this would be something that would now be on file, um, whether they uh, saw in my favor or not, um, because I can't imagine this detective not having problems with other people. Um, a problem that I came up against, which wasn't addressed in the video, is I did go to an advocacy group. They represent LGBTQ people. Uh, they assigned an intake person to assess me. From what I understood is she was in college, and this advocacy group was more interested in apparently my self-esteem than um, taking on crime. So uh, what did it for me was, I believe it was my third or fourth session with this intake person that she looked at her notes, she told me that I was changing my story um, and then I said, well, what part of my story am I changing? Uh, she said, oh, it sounds like things are becoming clearer for you or your memory is starting to come back. And I told her, what do you mean? My memory isn't coming back. Nothing has changed in my story. And then I asked her, you're not confusing me with like another person who you're advising or counseling, are you? And she said, oh, no, 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 no. And then I just saw her stumbling some more and I, I really think that she was looking at notes of a different person. 
I decided I was done with that anti-violence group that looks out for LGBTQ people. If someone were to ask, well, um, did you get any justice out of any of this? Uh, no. Where are you now with all this? Well, I'll tell you a little story. And I was at my wits end. I went down to Florida to see my mom and I went to the beach. And um, when I was at the beach, I went into the water and then I laid down in the water. And then I just thought that I was just gonna close my eyes for a second and just kinda float and relax. And the next thing I know, someone shakes me and I open my eyes. And this woman who's on the beach, uh, I see her and she's sitting next to another woman. And she says, oh, thank God you're alive. We thought you were dead. I almost fell asleep just there in the water. And the fact that I was alive, to me, that, that was enough. That was enough to be like, you know what? You're not gonna make these cops or this detective do justice by you. You're probably not going to catch these guys who did this to you. Um, you try to do everything that you could do to get justice for yourself and to also protect your community. But um, justice was not going to happen the way that you wanted it to happen. But on the bright side of things, you are alive. So to answer some of your questions, um, John McClintock asked, can't you ask the bank to show you or the police the footage from the ATM withdrawals? Well, um, I tried to get that footage and because the detective was uh, not being helpful with me at all, he did nothing to try and get the ATM footage. When I went to the convenience store and I asked for the footage, uh, they would not give it to me. And then I went back to that uh, bodega because I had found out that um, in New York State, um, anyone who has an ATM has to have uh, at least 45 days of footage that has been recorded on that ATM and then it can start looping over itself. So the second time that I went to the bodega to say, hey, I know what the New York state laws are. Uh, you need to make sure you save this footage. I noticed that there was no DVRs left and um, all the um, TV screens that they had in the bodega were all black. Like there was no nothing being recorded. So I asked them, I was like, hey, do you still have the DVR? And they're like, oh, it's, uh, no, no. I'm like, what, is it broken? Oh, uh, no, no, you'd have to ask the manager. Uh, I don't know. Um, did the cops take it? I contacted the police department. I'm like, uh, did you get this footage from this bodega? Nothing. So, uh, yeah. So one comment that I have here, which I got a lot of, which is from Global Tube Truth, is giving me lessons. Lessons number one, don't ever leave your drink unattended. Lesson number two, don't drink alcohol in public places. Number three, don't go out bar hopping alone. Yeah, I live in New York City. I should not have left my drink unattended, but uh, yeah. Um, Leif Lefson wrote, so going to Latino gay bars didn't work for you. This has nothing to do with uh, people's ethnicity or their orientation. Criminals come in all shapes, sizes, orientations, um, genders. Um, so if you want to focus on that part of the story, then that's on you. Um, I have absolutely no problem going to uh, Latino gay bars. Oh, oh, and it gets better because... Jalen S56 comes to my defense saying, um, I was in Colombia. Um, I wasn't in Colombia. I was in New York City and I, I state that in the video. 
Um, eat my dust starts out by saying, so riddle me this genius, which he spells genius wrong. Tom Thomas asks, did you eat any dead tortured animal flesh that night? Um, no. Um, it looks like Kev Connecticut one, it's K-E-V-N-C-T one, says to me, something doesn't add up here. Plus, scopolamine has never been documented in the U.S., so unless you're lucky number one, I don't think it was that. However, something did happen to you, and I'm sorry. I think it was more in the lines of a roofie. Well, um, Kev, where, where are you getting this information that it's never been documented in the United States? It has been documented in the United States. Uh, I think you should probably do a little bit more research on that. Suraj Kumar asks, can I get this drug? I'd like to experiment with my own self. Well, oh, good luck with that. Uh, Biotribe asked the question, um, do you think it would be possible to kill on the drug? Um, I don't know if you're asking if someone who has been drugged could kill or if you're asking if someone could be killed by um, having the drug um, ingested in them. Um, is the scopolamine drug um, attacks your uh, central nervous system and that some people who have ingested the drug, um, whether it be blown on them or it be in liquid form and they've been roofied with it, um, sometimes it compromises their central central nervous system so much that they have a heart attack and die. And I've had a few questions asking me about uh, which gay bar um, it was in Jackson Heights. The only reason why I don't want to talk about what bar it was is because um, uh, it can be viewed as slander if you are um, making accusations about um, a place, um, especially in a social media forum and you're not actually bringing charges um, against a place. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is because this whole hashtag me too um, thing has happened and I have been a little frustrated by it because it, you know there's people that are coming forward you know 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 40 years after the fact and it seems like people, uh, you know, want to get justice for things that had happened where it's so hard to try and get justice for um, things from that long ago. I wish there was more advocacy throughout all this hashtag me too of everything that people can do in real time to get people off the street who are predators. Even though I was not successful in what it is that I tried to do, I went into everything going, hey, you're a victim. There is most likely gonna be other victims. Um, let the cops know. Um, not only let the cops know, um, see if there's anyone else you can reach out to. Hopefully you can say, you know what, I want to be able to protect other people. So even if someone might not believe my story or think my story is fishy or uh, question me, um, that's fine. Um, because if I can get you to just do that amount of work to look into it, then maybe you might end up finding out, oh, actually... Uh, this is an issue that's going on in our community here. Uh, so on one hand, the Me Too thing frustrates me because you really wish people would have came out more in real time to take people down because um, it seems like no one would have a problem taking down someone doing something sick or perverted at your local McDonald's or someplace where um, economically people feel like they could have the upper hand on someone. You have to put a story out there about what has happened. So then if there are other people who have been affected, 
that, hey, you might all come out of the woodwork and address this. So it's, it's a very gray area, um, but doing something proactive to me is one of the best cathartic things that I can do in order to try and get justice. I am not as much concerned about my self-esteem or how someone perceives me, um, whether that be someone from an advocacy group worried about my self-esteem as an LGBTQ person. Um, what I, I feel like my self-esteem is pretty good. Um, what uh, concerns me more is people not being proactive. And so I will most likely take this video down shortly as I'm going to take down the video that I posted in September of uh, 2015 because what one thing I learned out of all of this social media sharing is that people are nasty. They just are nasty. They're mean and nasty and uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, it's almost 2018. It's the end of December 2017. I wish everyone a happy new year. And yes, there is a happy ending to my story, which is I am fucking alive. And that's a good thing. Okay. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.